we live? Is this working? Let's see. Why don't I get my chat window? Why don't I get my chat window? Come on. Oh, it looks like we are live. Hello, gentlemen, uh, Admiral Octavio. So actually, I'm going to just open the stream on my phone. That way I can see what people are saying on my phone. It's an amazing way of making things work, maybe. <laughs> Ooh, hello, Hog Hogarth. And we have William Bartholomew. Yeah, live, it's working, it's working. Good, I have this uh, usual weird delay between what I'm saying and then seeing the result on the screen. Hello, Arturo. Uh, so I'm trying to find, like I used to have like some kind of uh, window on my screen. Right now I'm not showing the screen, but I used to have some kind of window on my screen where I could actually see all of the chats and it's not really, visible right now. Hmm. Weird. Oh, well. Hey, so we are getting a lot of Oh, yes, yes. Thank you, William. Smash that like button. Uh, I like when people like do my job for me <laughs> and tell people what to do. We have Captain Fruitbat from New Zealand. Luca Isaac. Hello, as well. Uh, Roberto Tolosa Jr., Serge Benamou from Montreal, excellent. Dean Smith, Breo, I wish it was weekend so I could stick around a little longer. Oh, wow, Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, I'm doing good, and you, Buggyland, Billy Verdon, I love your videos, and I don't even do astrophotography. Billy, you don't do astrophotography and you're here. Wow. <laughs> uh, Mark, go Quivy, uh, David, hi, are you having fun? I am, I don't know about you guys. If you're not having fun, it's probably a problem, <laughs> but you can drop anyway. Uh, Dave, uh, hello, uh, Micro97, uh, evening peeps, hello peep. And yes, Hogarth, it is 7 a.m. for me. I am up early because uh, I don't know, I, I can't, and I uh, kind of woke up and decided I would do a stream and uh, just make it work, hopefully. Uh, Billy, Oklahoma, UK, Australia, uh, Trinidad and Tobago, Montreal, New Zealand. Uh, I, I thought I saw someone from like Norway at some point, but I don't find it anymore. Ooh, yes, Norway, Tor, Tor Jensen. Italy, London, another one from Norway. Hola, amigos. Uh, Mexico. And Jaloman, uh, how's the weather in Tokyo? It's raining. <laughs> okay, so that's that's not great. But anyway, let me share my screen. Let me share my screen so that so that let's see, let's see. Okay, uh, 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 main streaming scene. Jump up. There we go. Okay, and you should be seeing my screen. So this is actually the result of a night of imaging. A few days ago, we had a clear night uh, in the rainy season, and it was close to the new moon, uh, which was kind of a miracle. So I had to take advantage of it. Fun fact, it's also the night where I took uh, images with the uh, QHY tiny pex pixel camera, the QHY53715 C. They do like good names, don't they? Um, yeah. Uh, Alan from the UK, uh, Buggyland from Down Under, uh, Admiral Octavio, hello, some more UK, so many UK. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, you don't have any dark in the UK these days, right? So that's not great. Uh, we have a lot of people from uh, Norway as well. This is amazing. Uh, are you guys able to see my screen? Yes, I think you, you are. So, uh, topic of today, it's this data, which I took uh, a few days ago, 
and single night of data. And it is like, uh, it's been a long time since I used my Hyperstar setup. So this is taken with my Celestron C6 with the Hyperstar V4 lens, if I remember correctly. And uh, the IMX571 camera from Rising Cam slash TubeTech on my SEM60 mount. Uh, Admiral Octavio has no Astro Dark. We have Slovenia. Luca is from Slo Slovenia. This is awesome. We have Quebec, Canada. Some, uh, some more. Etienne Morin. Ah, that sounds. I can. I can pronounce that name probably correctly. Um, New York, Washington. Uh, Ronald Bryson. Brisson. Hello. <laughs> And we have 80 people. What? Like, how come? How come I'm getting so many people? Are you guys like Hima, as we say in Japanese? You don't have anything to do. <laughs> Just kidding, of course. Um, we have Roberto from Brazil. Uh, longest night here, and Ronald is from Chicago, Germany. Uh, Trif Trifid. Triffid from Germany, uh, wie geht's? Uh, ich, kann, ich kann kein Deutsch sprechen, uh, aber ich, uh, ich habe Deutsch für, für uh, sieben Jahre gelernt, gelernt aber, ich, aber ich habe alle mein Deutsch vergessen. Anyway, uh, on a la France, avec Dark Pixel, uh, Iowa, United States, uh, Belo Cielo from Chile. People are smashing that like button. Uh, yeah, Dave, where are you from? I, I never heard of you or who you are. And we have Mexico. And yes, of course, Etienne saying too much smoke here. Of course, too much smoke with all of those wildfires going on, which is a bit of a shame, like a lot of a shame. We have the ne Netherlands and we have... I, I don't know why I'm getting some message retracted things. Are you able to retract your message or were they censored? I have no idea. Okay, um, yeah. Are you guys here to just talk or do you want to do some processing? <laughs> I can do I can do either. <laughs> uh, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, yeah, I, I, I actually I studied. Yeah, I, I think I said it in German, uh, yeah, Germ um, German for seven years in high school and middle school, I think. Yeah, it, it was not like I didn't get such a good result. I cannot speak uh, German very well. Hello, uh, Paul Bert. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, my German is not that good. <laughs> what is it? Schlecht? My, 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 my Deutsch is uh, nicht gut. It's, yeah, whatever. Um, oh, and Puerto Rico. Awesome. Sweden. Oh, John is here just to, uh, just to talk. We have hi and bonjour from Suisse. Excellent. I've actually been uh, watching a lot of, uh, webcasts from uh, the Swiss Alps recently because there's been a, a paragliding hike and fly competition there, kind of like the biggest competition in the paragliding world. And as usual, it's a Swiss Swiss guy who won. He won wins every year that paragliding competition. Okay, okay. So uh, let me energy citizen. Yes, it is. I don't know what it is, but it is. And Johan, Johan is saying that uh, he lo he loves how active my channel has been nowadays. Well, with the rainy season, I think I'm going to be a bit less active, but at least I have this image to play with. I've actually made a video about that image, but it's not published yet. So I'll probably, you know, I'm doing the live stream before the video and I've already actually processed this image once, but we'll do it again because processing is fun. Um, Oh, and Dave, thank you for you mistyped and you retracted. So I didn't even know you could retract a message. It's good to know you can. Uh, let's see. Let me go back to YouTube because my phone bugged out. Okay. Uh, good. Good. So let's uh, let's get to processing. So I was saying, Hyperstar. I haven't used my Hyperstar for a long while because I was too busy with the Newtonian cheap telescope. Um, but finally, back to Hyperstar. And I actually, um, I'll have a video on the channel up maybe tomorrow, tonight, the day after tomorrow, I don't know, depending on uh, when I come around to processing it. 
Um, let's see. Aloha from Hawaii. Hawaii. And that's awesome. We get so many people from all, or, all around the world. Really loving your vids, by the way. You and Nico from Nebula Photos are the reason I started with that hobby. Keep it up. Honestly, Nico from Nebula Photos, if you guys don't watch him, that guy is amazing, absolutely amazing. And like the videos are so in-depth, like really, really, really in-depth. Um, what's happening, Hoggers? I always like to support my fellow YouTuber astrophotographers. Grab yourself a sake. Uh, yeah, keep up the tremendous work. Dude, thank you so much. I actually had just have like Coca-Cola because it's 7 a.m. here, 7.20 a.m. Uh, even Coca-Cola is not good, but whatever. I felt like Coca-Cola. I left my job yesterday, so I'm like, I I, I can do whatever the hell I, I want. I, I, I'm starting a new job though, so don't worry about uh, about me. Um, CS Rodney, are you not German? Uh, ich bin ein Berliner. No, <laughs> I'm not a, a Berliner. I'm not German. Uh, are you still using the Astroasis focuser? So I still have it on the Ascar V and I'm debating whether I should buy the Ascar V uh, because I haven't bought it yet. It's still on loan. I'm kind of like not reminding Ascar about it, kind of hoping they'll forget I have that uh, Ascar V telescope and, and never ask for it back. But the Astroasis focuser is on it. And right now, my two mounts have been busy with the Celestron C6 and with the Quattro 150P. So I haven't had the opportunity to use the Astroasis uh, anymore for now. And Hogarth, by the way, thank you again. Like contributions like this really help the channel going. So yeah, thank you so much. Um, yes, Hyperstar. So Hyperstar, I've been having issues, intermittent. Uh, whenever I tried to use it, I was getting, uh, again, there will be more details in the video, but a, what I call the donut of doom or the donut of death, where like in the center of the image, like like around here in the image where I have my mouse cursor, hopefully you can see it, I would get um, like a weird shadow embossing that's perfectly round and it like almost seems to be a shadow of the secondary or in that case, the hyperstar lens. And I think it had to do with reflections. So yeah, I mean, uh, I, I bought a new dew shield and it seems to be fixed. Uh, we have Sean, Sean saying hello. We have R1's Adventure saying bonjour, bonjour. Um, and Peter, this is Hyperstar C6. The focal length is 300 millimeters. Actually, the um, astrometric solution tells me it's 310 milli uh, millimeters. Because of course, when you're using, I don't know, actually, when you're using Hyperstar, does moving the mirror change the focal lengths? I don't know. Anyway, it says 310. Um, yeah. And we have uh, Lynn telling uh, us, uh, great to see this live. Thanks for all the great videos. Well, thank you for being on this live. We have 94 people. Can we get it to 100? <laughs> I, I don't know. Hello, uh, Sunny from uh, Sunny Edmonds from sunny Southern California. I'm jealous of you for being uh, sunny. We have Lee and uh, and Luke has an extensive video about a similar issue on his Raza. Yeah, I haven't watched Luke's uh, recent videos. I need to catch up. I actually uh, am regularly chatting with Luke on on private messages on Instagram. Luke is awesome. If you guys don't know what I'm, who I'm talking about. Luke from the channel Lucomatico. He does some really good stuff. Uh, he's from the UK, I think. UK. Oh, I hope I'm not completely wrong. And probably doesn't have any astronomical darkness these days. Um, yeah, Lee. Uh, hello. And Hyperstar C6. So I would have that donut of death. And that's actually, it was impossible to calibrate out. And it was also impossible to get rid uh, with like dynamic background extraction or even things like uh, Graxpert. Now, uh, a Hyperstar, by the way, people ask me a lot and I might do like a, a separate video, which do I prefer my Newtonian or my Hyperstar telescope because they have the same uh, aperture effectively. I like both. 
but to be fair, like the hyperstar stars in the corner, at least with my collimation, like if you're a pixel peeper, uh, people will not like the stars in the corner, right? I'm perfectly fine with that stuff, but yeah, just uh, just so you know. But I, I, I love imaging at f2, and I love the fact that it's not really too expensive uh, for what it is. Keith is saying that I don't need to touch that image. It's perfect just like it is. Good, okay, let me stop the live stream, good. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, Alex saying that he's jealous of my latitude in Tokyo. Uh, yeah, because I still get some astronomical darkness a few hours. Actually, this image is 55 exposures of five minutes, like throughout the whole astronomical darkness on the Eagle Nebula. That's super low, even for me. Uh, in the sky, it's like in the Tokyo smog, and I'm so surprised I was able to get this image. This is, by the way, with the Antlia ALPT high speed filter, which is a dual band filter in Oxygen 3 H alpha with a band pass of 5 nanometer each. Uh, we have Athol, Athol Bain, greetings from New Zealand. Uh, thoughts on the ZWC Star 50? Uh, honestly, it looks amazing. Um, I, I've been using a lot the Dwarf 2 off the channel, like uh, when I go paragliding, I often take the Dwarf 2 with me if I know it's gonna be clear skies in the evening because it's a, a lot of fun for EAA. Uh, but I, it looks on paper that the ZWC star is likely a better telescope, uh, although it is bigger and heavier, right? So it's uh, uh, the Dwarf 2 is more adapted for things like hiking, I would say, the C star, I'm, I'm excited to see. Uh, did you try APP? No, I have never tried APP, or actually I have, but every time I look at the interface and all of those buttons and tabs and stuff make me want to puke and I just like stop looking at the interface and close the window, I am superficial like that. <laughs> um, how do you figure out the focal length of a primary mirror in an RC scope? Uh, well, you could remove the primary mirror uh, and, and cook something with it and see how far you need to be from the mirror to cook something. No, I'm saying bullshit, but whatever. Um, we have uh, Martin saying that clear skies just south of the Scottish 11.26 p.m. sun rises in three hours. Is it worth getting the kit out? It depends what the kit is. If it's a small and light kit, like say Red Cat on an AM3, then yeah, otherwise maybe not. Depends. How long does it take? How much pain is it? Uh, whoo, we passed 100 viewers, Peter. You're right. Thank you. I don't know if it's Peter or Pet Peter. I'm not sure. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta, you can reduce the ring by using the circular option in DB. There's a circular option in DB. Okay, I'm, I'm finally going to, to touch a tool. There is a circular option in DB. Wait, what? Is this it? No. Where is the circular option in DB? Uh, oh, there, what? No, I don't know. Uh, hmm, uh, yeah, a a anyway, anyway, 5 am uh, yeah, Mexico. PixInsight is known for its great interface design. You know what? You know what, Jalloman? Actually, I love, I absolutely love the PixInsight way of thinking and UI. I, 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 I know, I know, it's probably just me, but I love how it's organized. Uh, the only thing that gets confusing is the, the square versus round icon to me, but otherwise it feels so nice to me, but I'm weird like that. Axial at the top. Uh, oh, this, oh, cool. I had never realized this existed. Okay, this is good to know. I'll, uh, I'll try it out next time. Hello from Gran Canaria, Canary Islands. I'm told there's great paragliding in the Canaries. So uh, I hope to visit there one day, maybe for Astro as well, but mostly for paragliding. Uh, anyway, anyway, we should be doing something, right? So this is the image. I currently only applied a control click, uh, an auto stretch on it. And I think uh, the uh, first uh, stuff I'd like to do, and we have Dean saying, uh, good day, Mike, uh, from Australia, a happy winter solstice. Happy solar solstice. <laughs> Um, and yes, to each their own, gentlemen, absolutely. So let me do actually, yeah, we were talking about DB. So let's actually get to some processing. This time I don't have like the hardcore processor on the on the chat yet, so this is good. I don't have uh, like Bill or, or um, Sean from Visible Dark, so people are not like pressuring me to start 
uh, processing as quickly as possible. I have a positronic brain. Uh, maybe I'm like, uh, what's the name of R. Daniel Oliver there? So if you've what if you've read the Asimov um, books, you'll know who I'm talking about. Maybe maybe I I am bound by the uh, the three laws are now four laws of robotics. Um, you just set up your ASI Air Barry. Congrats on the Cocoon Nebula. That's a good target. Uh, so you will catch the recording of the stream uh, tomorrow. Thank you very much. Good luck with the imaging and the processing. Let's get with DBE. Uh, Houston, Texas, checking in. Um, uh, Houston, uh, we've had a problem. No, we not yet. Well, we probably will. Um, data, data, B4, uh, data. Um, yeah, uh, data, this is Bordel 8.9 and this is narrowband. And I'm going to select some samples for dynamic background extraction because I need to be doing some processing, not just like, like um, uh, speaking around. So here, like I'm, I, I hate this kind of image uh, for dynamic background extraction because I never know exactly where I should be clicking to remove the background. So I kind of like try to look at the, uh, the background from um, uh, the, like that looks darker, right? Like that kind of greenish dark type of background. And you know what, I'm going to also go and increase the tolerance to one. So I, I include more more pixels. There we go. Uh, uh, yeah, and I, I'm not like too demanding about background extraction. It's typically kind of okay. And if my background extraction, which in Tokyo is always kind of horrible, even with narrowband, uh, doesn't work well, I have the right solution, the perfect solution, the noob solution, which is to crop the image. It works great. Cropping is awesome. <laughs> Uh, this image, by the way, is uncropped. It's only the auto crop from the uh, stack. But here I have some samples. And uh, let's have a look just like I'm going to add some more here, um, maybe here as well. Let's have a look quickly at how the uh, the actual background would look like. So normally, I'll be able to see what Russ, 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 Russ McKinney. Well, thank you. $10. <laughs> this is awesome. This is actually super useful, guys. Uh, because like, really, there are expenses linked to running a YouTube, a YouTube channel. And this actually helps a huge lot. And thank you so much for this. And I'm, I'm glad I am um, streaming. Uh, Sean, I need to learn how to set up the toolbars uh, buttons on PixInsight. Um, yes, you know what, actually, I, I need to learn how to save my my workspaces. So I have my all all of my icons set up properly, I never use icons. And this is really, 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 really bad for uh, for me, these icons, they are opened, I, uh, I got them from Bill from Bill Blanchon, I featured his uh, icons, his process icons on the channel before. He's amazing. He's a wizard. He's awesome. And uh, his processes are incredible. Uh, if you search, uh, Luke from Luke Matizos channel has uh, featured Bill's um, processes quite a bit. He has links to the Google Drive where the scripts are. But if you search for Bill Blanchin scripts or Bill Blanchin, he has his own YouTube channel as well. You'll find the links to the scripts. We'll use them in this processing. So they're going to be awesome. Uh, so anyway, going back to DBE, you know what? Looking at this, it looks like a good background. So I'm just going to go uh, YOLO and uh, do a subtraction. And we're going to replace the target image, normalize, discard the background model. And normally, actually, I would probably have removed the stars before doing the dynamic background extraction, but I completely forgot about this, uh, this step. So that's how things are. Let me try this and see what happens. Okay, so let's do a quick Auto stretch again. And here we are, we do see a lot more data. Now that we've done a first uh, DBE. Uh, late here, Willie, bonne nuit. Have a great, uh, great night. 
Wow, seems there's a circular gradient made by the filter. I don't think it's the filter. I think it's uh, Hyperstar, it's the optics, because I see this kind of gradient with um, a simple L filter as well. Uh, greetings from New Zealand. Vince, welcome, welcome. Uh, division renders less noise. Try instead of subtraction. Division renders less noise. Why? Why would it render less noise? The, rest, the noise is just like a standard deviation around some mean, right? I don't see why division would do anything for that compared to addition to subtraction for DBE. Interesting. Interesting. Well, you know what? Let's. Uh, we. Oh no! I've already discarded the points, but uh, I'll try that separately. But I don't see why division would render less noise. Like normally, I would use division when I have a very um, clear kind of flat type of pattern, like optical uh, thing kind of uh, kind of pattern. Hey, Luke, welcome. Good to catch you on stream, dude. This is awesome. We have Luke in the in the channel uh, in the in the chat. Um, Luke Matico, if you don't know his channel, go and watch his channel. He's awesome, seriously. Um, and we have Jeremiah saying that uh, we're awaiting an ASI Air guide scope and a ZW guide camera. Still in transit, so I have some time left to join your Patreon, so I can you can answer all my questions. <laughs> Well, don't ask too many questions. <laughs> oh man, oh this is awesome. Uh, I was referring to the circular uh, gradient. Yes, dark pixels. That's what I was uh, referring to as well. I see that with other filters as well. Although it's not like green red, it tends to be like brighter at the center of the frame that than at the edges. Not and weirdly not like vignetting. Kind of a weird pattern with Hyperstar, but it's something that I really don't care much about. Um, yeah, I think Luke. Do you know if it's possible to do like a live stream with two people at once, like we're both talking to one another? Because that would be awesome to do a live stream where we're like just shooting the sh together and uh, and uh, yeah, that would be cool. Anyway, we'll we'll have to look into that. And we have yes, the the from Maryland, Eastern USA, too much smog and smoke, right? Yep. Um, anyway, I've done like the first step. We see more details in the uh, in the Eagle Nebula. And by the way, as you can see from the title of the frame, this is drizzled data, uh, drizzled uh, two times. Oh, Adam Block says division renders less noise from the background rem removal process. Well, if Adam says it, it's probably true. Huh? That's interesting. Why? Why though? Division DB. DBE using symmetries first. Okay, that that uh, okay. Well, I'll have to look look at it. Interesting. I had no idea that would be the case. Interesting. Two or more live stream. Just use zoom or similar. Right. Okay. Thanks, Dark Pixel. So that that. Okay, okay, uh, you know what? So division, that's what I'll try next time. Now I'm too lazy to go back and set the points again, but I'll try that next time. I never really saw like any less noise with division. Oh, by the way, this is a great uh, zoom out because my data is drizzled. And the problem is during my capture, I had five minutes exposures, but I forgot to dither every one frame. I desert every three frames, which is absolutely not enough. So what's happening is you see the remnants of the Bayer pattern in those weird bands of color for that zoom level. The moment I zoom, I zoom more, they're gone. But if I zoom in kind of the right level, I don't know if it's visible from the YouTube compression, you'll see some weird lines in the image. But we'll take care of that later. So uh, don't worry about it. So we have the drizzled image full resolution. Before I do the magical blur exterminator, I'm going to do a spectro photometric color calibration. So where is my SPC? Uh, all processes because I don't have favorites. Spectro photometric color calibration. It's super cali uh, spectro photometric color calibration. Uh, there. Uh, what messages am I missing? Uh, yo, Astro, Astro Peeps. Uh, sneaker sets. Awesome. Uh, you can go live with two people. Yeah, you have to use Google Meet or Zoom or that kind of stuff. Pope Astro 
San Francisco Bay Area. That's an awesome area. Ah, welcome, welcome to the stream. And oh yes, of course, Adventures of an Amateur Astronomer. Yes, I've been on the Astro Imaging channel a long time ago and they do exactly that. So that's absolutely right. Uh, let's see, so I want to do narrowband filters mode and my band path, band path, band width for each of those was five. Uh, Pope Astro, $2, I can buy a coffee. Uh, uh, not at Starbucks because Starbucks is over overpriced as always, but I can buy a coffee. This helps actually the channel a lot. Thank you so much for this. This is awesome. Um, uh, broad, broad, Brodim 45. Hi. <laughs> and uh, Dave, I have personally never seen a difference between division and subtraction. And I have to deal with the Chicago Skyglow. We love Skyglow. Skyglow is awesome. Um, oh, yes, you're right. And oh, Luca, uh, good night, clear skies, uh, take it easy and, uh, and yeah, rest well. Okay, so uh, spectrophotometric color calibration. Uh, yeah, background neutralization. Where, where should I pick like a, a shot of background? I'm going to create a preview here. Last time I did a live stream, I didn't use the background. And uh, Sean from Visible Dark, who's really good at uh, processing and explaining his processing, told me I should always use a region of interest for the background. And that's what I'm doing right now. So I set a preview in here and setting my region of interest. And we're going to apply this, right? Right, hopefully. Let's see, and it failed. The image has, has no valid astrometric solution. Oh, come on. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, I think it's because I opened the TIFF file. I, I had transferred it to a TIFF file. So I'm just first going to do an image solver and we're gonna search for M16 and uh, validate this. We had a pixel size. Yes, the pixel size is uh, 1.88 because uh, we have the uh, drizzling. So I'll keep that. And my focal distance is 310. Hopefully, this is going to work to have the image solve. Uh, may... Oh, come on, that's fine. And let's see what happens. Yeah, I, I thought like the um, if I had opened the X, if, XISF file directly from the stacking process, it would have been pre-solved, but I had saved it as a TIFF file as well. And so I, I, I kind of con got confused between the two formats. Obviously, when you use the XISF format after stacking a Pixinsight, site, it uh, keeps in the, um, uh, the, the coordinates. And so that's what I was expecting. And we are now solved. And Mauricio Moreno, thank you so much. What is this currency? CLP, 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 5,000 CLP, CLP, uh, currency. Whoa, Chili Peso from Chile. This is awesome, Chilean Peso, this is awesome. Thank you so much for this. This helps out, awesome. Oh, no, seriously, this helps out the, the channel a lot, actually. It's um, really, it really helps helps me keep going, buy equipments, uh, pay for the shipping when I need to return the equipment, all that kind of stuff. There are expenses associated. Anyway, thank you so much. And now, thanks to this uh, influx of, uh, of Genki from uh, Mauricio, uh, we can do the SPC, SPCC even, and hopefully it's gonna work. And let's see, fingers crossed. Why aren't you using the preset filters? Uh, I set it to a uh, narrowband filters mode. And because I was using the ALPT and, and so I feel like I'm not an expert in SPCC. I just recently started using it, but if that's the wrong method, let me know because I think for narrowband, you're supposed to check narrowband filters mode, which removes like the, uh, the filter selection. And uh, it's interesting, we get like the red green flux properly aligned, but then we have like the br blue green flux that isn't. And I assume it's because blue green is basically all in the oxygen three, but I don't know. So whatever, it's, uh, I think it works. So now I'm going to do, instead of a control click, I'm gonna do a shift click to apply the linked uh, auto stretch. 
Oh, and I, I, I clicked on the super strong auto stretch. So that's not good. There. Okay, this is looking good. I like those colors. Oh, this is nice and red and bloody. Um, yes, Malcolm. Hi from Australia. Anthony, Anthony Michel. Hello, hello uh, from France. Now I can do the French accent because we have more French people in the house. Uh, et oui, il y, a des, il y a des nuages en France aussi. Bah, on est dans la saison des pluies ici à Tokyo, donc c'est la même chose. Hein. Oh là là, c'est vraiment un petit peu suant quand même. Uh, mais bon, on va, on va s'en sortir. We're gonna, we're gonna get out from this, uh, this rainy season and those clouds very, very soon. Um, and Stephen, yes, the Eagle Nebula you shot it for the past two nights. Uh, oh, they have the L ALPT in the preset filters. Seriously? Ooh, let me clone this image just so we have it and go back. Okay, uh, control click so we see what we're doing. And uh, so I don't, I remove uh, the narrowband filters mode and they have, they have the, am I supposed to, how does it work? How does this work? They have the ALPT in the preset filters. Uh, do they? Am I supposed to be up uploading something or? <laughs> Canon, Canon, Batter, Astronomic, Astrodon, Antlia, V Pro Series R. I don't find it. I don't find it. I'm sorry, I don't find it. Uh, how many languages do you uh, do you speak? Uh, I speak three languages fairly fluently: English, French, and Japanese. Um, I've learned German from down at the bottom. Down at the bottom. Sorry, sorry, I got down at the bottom. At the bottom. At the at the bottom of the list. Pope Astro, help me! Help me, Pope Astro! You're my only hope. <laughs> Uh, I don't see it. Anyway, I, I think honestly, like the uh, the red image that we got earlier doesn't didn't it look like decent anyway? So I feel like I don't need to. Oh, filter management, import CSV filter definitions. Maybe I need to import the filter. Maybe you know what? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, uh SPCC SPCC uh, ALPT. There. Let's see. Whose bottom did you learn German from? Uh, whose bottom? <laughs> uh, okay, of the first. Oh, there it is. You're right, Sony CMOS. I was looking at the first word and you're right, Antlia ALPT is here. Oh, this is so cool. But this is weird, why, why would it work? And ALPT est à côté d'un Canon aussi. Yeah, there's also ALPT. And ALPT is Canon. So you have Canon ALPT and Sony ALPT. I'm getting so confused. Har, why? Har, why? Why? <laughs> well, thank you so much for letting me know this. This is super cool. Uh, but will, will we get similar results? We'll see. Um, hmm, very interesting though. I had absolutely no idea and I don't know why they, they put it together with a UV IR cut because I mean, obviously the ALPT also cuts UV and IR, but it's like doing a bit more than that. Yes, Woody smashing the light, like, you know what? Oh, wow. Yes, it looks different. Now we have the blue green flux looking better and the red green flux looking slightly less good actually. Oh, this is interesting. It's for the sensor you have. Makes sense, Pope Astro. I'm learning stuff. This is so cool. So because my sensor is Sony, uh, I, I thought Canon cameras these days, they were also using Sony sensors. But yeah, whatever. Oh, this is good. This is good. Let's let's try to compare the pictures. So I'm going to do a shift, uh, shift click on my, um, on my uh, da -da -da -da, auto stretch. There we are, and we can compare the two. So using the actual filter uh, definition versus using the narrowband mode. And 
They look similar, but the narrowband mode looks redder, I feel. And you know what? I actually kind of like the uh, the, the narrowband mode better, but uh, okay. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, Jeremiah, uh, sorry. <laughs> that was a good joke. Um, Canon sensors are Canon. Yes, that makes sense. Uh, which image should we proceed with? Should we proceed with the one using the narrowband mode on the left or the one using the filter mode? What did I say on the left? Sorry, the one with the narrowband mode on the right and the one are the one from the um, uh, filter mode on the left. I guess we should use the filter mode. In QE curve, you can use, you can choose the sensor. Yes, that's true. The 571 is here. Should we try it again? Should we try it again with the right sensor? Let's do it. Let's do this. Like, honestly, this is, this is too beyond me. I, I'm too used to being too lazy. And you're right, Jeremiah, the, the saturation looks higher on the right, but don't worry, we're going to use the magic of Bill Blanchard's scripts later on to make the, the, uh, the, the colors look more like a Hubble palette. And it's going to be magical, hopefully. Fingers crossed that it's going to be magical. Let's see. Why is, why is this taking longer? So, you know, these days I've had, had some problem with PixInsight. Oh, we get something that looks very, very similar than before. So, okay, whatever. Let's, let's use this result and let's keep going. I'll have this cloned image here just in case I decide to go back. And now we are working on this here. Now, now that I've done the, um, the uh, color calibration, what I'll do is I remembered I'm on Hyperstar, so I'm going to go to Image, Geometry, and we're going to do a vertical mirror so that, yes, we have now the right orientation. And um, there we are. So, Blur Exterminator, Blur Exterminator, definitely Blur Exterminator. Ooh, Blur Exterminator, it's always like the best part. Uh, Blur Exterminator, here we are. And uh, I want to sharpen the stars quite a bit. So we're going to put 0 0.3 here. And I'm going to keep everything from the for the default. Uh, magic doesn't work in France. Katamai, katamai, come on. Magic works in France. A little bit. <laughs> La magie française. Uh, filter moon seems less saturated from France. Should I do all of my videos with uh, an outra outrageous French accent going forward? I mean, it could be fun, but I don't know. You tell me. Um, blur uh, or blur it. I, I would unblur it, though, right? Processing going on via my GPU. Uh, this is a crazy resolution image because we have the full uh, APS-C 571 resolution times four uh, because of the drizzling. So it's actually going super fast. I think if I didn't have like the GPU acceleration there, we'd be waiting like 10 minutes for the result. So I'm so glad I have the GPU acceleration set up. Here we are. Oh, the difference is amazing. Seriously, Blur Exterminator is just pay to win. Seriously, guys, come on. Oh, the before and after. It's not even close. Ah, oh, this is so cool. Oh, my word. Magic. The magic in Japan. The magic of Blur Exterminator. I love this. Ah, oh, this is so cool. Pure l'horreur. Non, keep the English accent. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll keep the... Uh, the, the weird accent. Usually people cannot really place my, my accent when I'm speaking normally. So that's uh, uh, sometimes people think I'm from, like from Northern Europe for whatever reason. So that's good. The, the, anyway, um, we have Blur Exterminator done. So now I'm going to do some Noise Exterminator. Uh, noise Exterminator. So last time actually Bill was telling me on the live stream that uh, no Noise Exterminator worked better after the, uh, the stretch. Um, but uh, when I re read the documentation afterwards, it's written white on black or black on white, I don't remember, uh, but that you need to do it before the stretch. So that's what we're going to do. And I, I like the 0 0.6 setting for me, seems to work quite well. The default 0 0.9 is far, far too aggressive. And I like to set the details to 0 0.2 or so. Um, and don't ask me what those numbers are. I have no idea. I just know what works for me. <laughs> 
So let's apply this. Some noise exterminator. Exterminate. Oh, this is good. Anthony says I should do one video with a French accent. Ah, uh, <laughs> maybe not. Uh, I, I I think uh, Dark Pixels was uh, was horrified, and I do not want to cause you know uh, too much um, hor horror and heart attacks to too many people. So we'll keep it as is. So first, with the noise exterminator, did I lose any details? It doesn't look like it. It looks like we keep all of the details and the, the noise is so much better controlled. Seriously, like noise exterminator and blur exterminator, they're not cheap. And star exterminator as well. They're not cheap, but they're like if you're if anyone is hesitating between spending three hundred dollars to buy the three plugins or buying like a new scope, go for the plugins. <laughs> It just makes so much of a of a difference, right? Yes, P Peter, I I completely agree. That is that is my understanding of um, dynamic background extraction uh, division versus uh, versus subtraction as well. Division for vignetting because then it simulates a flat frame, which where we do a, a bias subtracted division, uh, but uh, and subtraction would be for grad gradients and light pollution. That makes sense to me. Um, dark pixels, fait comme tu le sens. Thank you. Uh, do as you as you like. And uh, Zev, you're testing your AZGTI in EQ mode. It's tracking well. This is awesome. Uh, the go to is not working at all. Uh, you have set the equatorial firmware, right? Uh, hmm. It should be working. The go to. Uh, I don't think I had that issue. But if anyone knows what's going on with his AZGTI uh, or his or her, let them know. Um, and uh, and see what happens. So the image is starting to take shape. Uh, what I'm going to do now is resample it, right? Because uh, now we have the drizzled image with the crazy resolution. I'm actually going to do an integer resample somewhere. Where's my integer resample? Here we are. This is going to cut down the image back to size, compress it back to size of the original sensor. It's also going to reduce the noise that was introduced by the drizzling. And now we are back to the normal resolution of my sensor, but we still have the details from the, uh, the the pillars. Not as smooth, but still smooth enough. And I kind of like it like that. Anyway, I'm not a pixel peeper. Everything is working fine. Um, what should I do next? Should I stretch? Am I ready to stretch? Oh, that was bad. Oh, that was bad. I'm sorry. Am I ready to uh, stretch the image? Um, Ooh, Anthony, you bought the three plugins uh, two days ago. Worth the money. I completely agree. Honestly, like PixInsight with those plugins, it was super expensive, but it is. It's the things that I use for every single image. I use PixInsight and those plugins all the time. I use it to process other people's data. I get this is like literally the best astrophotography investment I've ever done. I, I bought PixInsight back in like, I was in uh, in Fudoma at the time. So I think it was 2014 uh, or even earlier than that, 2013, maybe like a long time ago. And it's it's been like, it's been amazing. I honestly, I have no idea why PixInsight is not like releasing a version 2.0 and charging again for it uh, because they, they've done, it's it's absolutely amazing. So um, yeah, let's do a stretch. So for the stretch, uh, obviously, I'll be using the general generalized hyperbolic stretch. No, of course not. I still don't get the hang of it. Uh, Adam Block made a great video recently on the Astro Imaging channel. Uh, the second half focused a lot on the generalized hyperbolic stretch. Uh, but even like following step by step, I'm terrible at it. So um, yeah, I, I'll be doing the uh, a Bill Blanchin script. I think there's a, a Bill Blanchin script for. Um, let's see. I think I have it somewhere. Yes, the linked stretch RGB here. I think that's going to work, um, and it works quite well. Uh, so let me open up. We don't have. I'm just going to apply it as is and not bother um, about. Oh, Linux Astro. I hadn't noticed you were here. Howdy, mate. 
And uh, yeah, it's good to know you you, you know uh, Luke's channel, which is awesome. And yes, Pope Astro one time payment. It's uh, it's amazing. It's really amazing. Anyway, stretching via scripts because I'm too lazy. Here is the stretched image. It does look good, doesn't it? Like I could I could already call it a day, right? I could say like, okay, that's my that's my image. I'm done. Goodbye. Uh, but we are going to use the star exterminator to remove the stars and do some more processing, maybe on curves and that kind of stuff. So, uh, ta -ta -ta -ta, ta -ta -ta -ta. star exterminator, that's what I was looking for. Star exterminators. Uh, should I, like, do you guys keep the unscreened stars uh, checked? Sometimes I see people, they just un uncheck that and just use it as is. But uh, yeah, I guess I'm just going to apply to remove the stars. That way we can process just the nebulosity, which is good. Let's see, any, any good messages? Um, by the way, anyone has any questions about processing, about equipment, about weather, about Tokyo, about uh, anime, about paragliding, about anything? Uh, you know, throw throw them out there. Um, it's it's fun, always fun, always good fun. Uh, and I have removed the stars. Okay, uh, I'm actually going to remove rename this image uh, stars. Here we go, and. I'm going to iconize it. Here we are. Okay. We're ready. This is this looks good. Honestly, this looks good. Um, so what should I do first? What should I do first? You know, I think the first step is I am going to do the um, the what's the name? The HOO normalization. Uh, HOO normalization is incredible by Bill Blanchon and uh, Pope Astro. Those color masks are also scripts by Bill Blanchon. So check Bill Blanchon's uh, channel or check uh, Luca Matico's channel or check one of my videos. I don't remember which one, so it's probably going to be more difficult to uh, search. But look if you have some time and you can put the link in in the chat. I hope uh, I hope YouTube will accept it to your uh, or the title of your video with the Bill Blanchon scripts. It will help everyone because those scripts are amazing. Um, ta -ta -ta. Uh, okay, so Pope Astro, where do you get the color masks? Hopefully, Luke, uh, check Luke Luke's videos or Bill Blanchon's uh, YouTube channel. Amazing, amazing scripts. Echo Tango, what brought you to Japan? How long have you lived there? Uh, a woman, a woman brought me to Japan. Uh, it didn't work out, <laughs> but I'm still here. <laughs> I've been in Japan for 16 years, more than 16 years now. So yeah, it's been a, it's been a while. Um, Jeremiah, along with auto guiding, I'm about to set up a new processing machine. Would you say that PixInsight completely replaces Photoshop? Well, to give you uh, an idea, I've never used Photoshop. So I guess it does. <laughs> uh, I think actually there are some things that you can do in Photoshop, especially with handling the colors that are more difficult to do in PixInsight. And if you watch Nico Carver's videos from Nebula Photos, he uses Photoshop a lot especially when he's dealing with colors. And a few months ago, when I asked for you guys help to uh, process my uh, Rosette Nebula, um, I got from the flows that people were sending me, a lot of people were saying they had used PixInsight for the whole flow. And at the very end, they switched to Photoshop just to do some color adjustments. Uh, I assume since it's just color adjustments, those could be done in GIMP as well, but I, I don't know for sure. Uh, otherwise, Gil Polbert, uh, yeah, Quiv, do you still have the uh, ASCAR 200 ACL? Do you use it often? The answer is no, and therefore I don't use it. So I had my astro slump when I stopped doing videos and I decided I was going to not continue this stupid hobby because it's so frustrating. I sold pretty much everything at that time except my Hyperstar setup. And so the ASCAR uh, went with the rest. Uh, I regret it. Um, yeah, it's a good it's a good lens. 
Uh, although I think there is some variance between the lenses, uh, unfortunately. Uh, so uh, it's, I, but it's still, I think it's a good lens, but honestly, having, having tried the Red Cats 51 um, recently, uh, I feel like if you're going to buy the Ascar 200, 200, you might as well buy the Red Cats or maybe buy the Samyang 135 millimeters F2 lens, because that one has so many solutions to fit uh, um, a focuser on it and that kind of stuff. Actually, you should watch um, Helena's Astro. She did a, a video uh, recently about how she built um, a portable setup to go to university with, uh, and she uh, she used the uh, 135 millimeters Samyang slash Rokinon lens, and it looks amazing. So yeah. Uh, Dark pixels. Do you did you plan to make a mosaic for the object on the right? So that is a good question, and the answer is no because I'm an idiot. Uh, I just like went directly to the uh, Eagle Nebula. I didn't even use the framing wizard, and I totally should have. I'm such an idiot. I don't even know what the uh, the item on the right is. Is it the Lagoon Nebula or whatever? I don't know. But I'm looking at this image, and I am hitting myself in the head to really like because I I, I missed an opportunity. They are definitely missed an opportunity to have better framing. Uh, I've never, re I've actually never done a mosaic. I'm scared of mosaics because uh, how do you, like when you have the gradients you have in Tokyo, I think it's like harmonizing the gradients. Uh, it sounds like hell. It sounds like so difficult. And I, I never had the courage to try for a mosaic. Um, yes, Richard, uh, have you done any fixed wing gliding? Something about collapsible canopies gives me the chills. No, I have not uh, used, done any fixed wheel, wing gliding because it's so fast. You, you guys in your, in your um, what's the name, hang gliders go so fast, it's scary to me. I fly with hang gliders quite a bit when I go and fly in scuba. Uh, but whoa, it is scary. You guys are fast. And when I'm thermaling together with fixed wing gliders, it's a bit scary, to be honest. Um, what do you do when a star exterminator cannot remove all stars? Like uh, like uh, this here? Is this a star? I don't even know. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't care about it. I just, I don't know. I, I just deal with it, I guess. Um, I think if, if it's not going to remove all of the stars, I might just process the old fashioned way with the stars and not care too much. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, up to now, I haven't really had this issue with uh, Star Exterminator. Rifle Heist, opinion on the William Optics GT71. Buyed one, bought one used with the flattener because my magnet wasn't getting round stars at all and color was off at bright stars. Which camera would you pair with the GT71? Um, I've never... Let me think. I don't think I've ever owned a William Optics scope besides the Red Cat that I got on loan. Um, and uh, yeah, so no, I have no idea uh, whether I don't have any opinion on the GT71, but because it's a small refractor and it has, uh, I believe, a full frame imaging circle. Uh, if you have the budget, I think the 571 sensor cameras like Tope Tech that I have or the ZW variant, the QHY variant, uh, they all work really, really, really well. And they would pair well. Uh, another solution would be to go with the 183 uh, sensor uh, if you want small pixels for better resolution. Or you could go with the um, Player One astronomy or the upcoming Tope Tech version of the 585 sensors. Uh, with their, their, there's going to be cooled version from both Player One and, to, and Tope Tech, and those have tiny pixels. It's a tiny sensors, but tiny pixel of 2.9 uh, micrometers, not as small as the um, as the uh, 183, but could be a good pairing. It really depends on your budget and what you want to achieve with it. Um, what else? Uh, uh, Pope Astro, yes. Thank you, Lucumatico, for the work he did with Bill Blanchan. Uh, how do you get rid of gradient in a wide field Milky Way image? You don't. You don't. <laughs> uh, dynamic background extraction. Gradexpert, uh, the uh, the free software grad grad expert grad expert. I don't remember the name, but if you search for that, you will find. Um, uh, it could work better. Some people really swear swear by, by it. Yes, there it is. 
search for Graxpert. It's a standalone software to do gradient removal, and that might work well for you. Uh, I use GIMP as my last step touch up. It has very good to, uh, good color uh, color tools. So yeah, I need to learn GIMP, GIMP some more. I use GIMP to do my um, uh, thumbnails for the videos. <laughs> But that's all uh, I used it. The Omega Nebula on the right. Thank you for letting me know. This is good. Uh, theoretically, after a good DBA, mosaics are fingers in the nose, uh, meaning uh, they're a piece of cake. Um, okay. Well, maybe I should try. Maybe my next target will be like uh, the, the frame on the right here to see what happens. Um, and Lubo, Lubo, welcome. Uh, hello from China. Welcome to... Uh, the uh, channel uh, 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 and that's all I know in Chinese, by the way. Also, I know uh, it helps. <laughs> so anyway, um, going back to uh, the Eagle Nebula, we, are, we have gotten rid of the stars and I wanted to apply the uh, HOO normalization. Now, the HOO normalization uh, from my test with this data earlier, uh, I saw that the car, when I applied it, the core of the nebula would get like far too uh, crazy. So we're going to try that just to double check. But yes, you see, like when I use it, like the core is completely blown out. So I'm going to remove that and we're going to go and double click on the uh, process icon and we're going to go for the normalization uh, mode to see normalization. And there's great documentation here, by the way, if you use this process um, where it explains everything and the curve stretch of the image is works much better when you have like uh, the oxygen three completely burnt out like we had uh, here. Oh, Lubo, you you understand? You understood? That's good. That's good. Katamai, um, yes. So the uh, Samyang one three five, um, there are bad samples. So you really want to buy from a shop where you know you can return it and get a new one. Uh, the sample that I had, I had one bad sample, and then I don't remember the history. I think I bought two. I don't quite remember, but I remember having troubles of tilt with it because I didn't have a good way to mount my camera to it. Uh, but I still took like some uh, some good pictures with it. Uh, the there is variation between the units though. Another way to get a good sample would be to buy on classifieds from someone who tells you that it's a good sample and can provide like sample images from it. So that's probably the way to go if you're going to buy the Rokinon and you want to make sure that it's going to work well. Uh, David, uh, hello everyone. Hope you are all okay. I'm doing great. Cannot wait for my player one Airy C five three three to arrive on Friday. Cannot believe companies have not updated their own five three threes. Tell me more. Like, what do you mean update the five three threes? What's happening? What what, what did I miss? What did I miss? Like, what's 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 new with the five three three sensor? Player one Airy C C five three three. Hello from Spain, Antonio. Hola, como estas? Uh, no, no entiendo castellano. <laughs> Whatever. Um, Ares C Pro. Um, oh yeah, Player One Astronomy website is so slow for me. I don't know if it's the same for you guys. What is new for that, David? If you have more details. Oh, okay. I know what is new. It looks sexy as heck. Oh man, this is a beautiful camera. Mmm, <laughs> yummy. Uh, welcome to the live where we look at some uh, camera porn. <laughs> uh, Tom Prescott. Uh, uh, I have been processing M16. I use SPCC and then Bills. HOO, it seems to blow out the core. I had to separate the channels and do Lucomatico Guide to create HOO. But with the C mode, you'll see it works. it will work better. Um, and Lubo Katamai, sorry. Oh yeah, you're just a pixel peeper. Katamai, bad, bad. Don't be a pixel peeper. Uh, and and Lubo, I tried the L ultimate, having coma around bright stars, but I don't think it comes from the filter. Rather, it comes from the reflection off of a corrector plate in secondary. Other than that, it's black magic. Absolutely, Lubo. What what scope do you use? Um, anyway, and and uh, and David, uh, tell me what's what's updated. 
Uh, Lucomatico, you are testing out the Mono 533 and the Cooled 585 from Player One. This is going to be good. I saw I saw your post with those uh, nice packages on your table. Um, increased well depths and USB Type C and carbon fiber. Okay, carbon fiber. I see. USB Type C. I still don't really care that much about it, but okay, I get it. And uh, the well depths. Okay, so this is an interesting thing actually. Let me uh, let me reconnect to my uh, remote PC. Hopefully it's uh, going to work. There we are. The uh, Taube Tech cameras with the 571 sensors, and I do believe, I would say likely the, uh, the 533 sensors as well, they have the extended full well depth. And uh, some people have told me like, and extended full well, I think it's gonna be good uh, there. Let's see, why is it USB 2.0? Oh, I need to reconnect the camera. Something is going wrong there, uh, but whatever. Um, yeah, it, we have the high full well mode here in the Tube Tech cameras. And I think we have that, that for 533. <laughs> Jeremiah, shouldn't you be blurring those cameras? YouTube is going to give you a strike, definitely. <laughs> definitely too sexy. Um, would you stop down the Samyang 135 to reduce star bloat but increase integration time? No, 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 I don't care about star bloat, especially if you have Blur Exterminator. Um, I'm currently on the four -third, micro four third sensors, the 294 MC Pro. What's the step up to APS-C like? Uh, stop with the camera porn. Uh, Richard, the uh, the feel of you will obviously increase. Uh, the biggest difference you'll see if you go from the 294 sensor to the 571, for instance, is no amp glow, and you can be free with your flats. It's much, much easier to calibrate, much, much easier. So it's something to, uh, to keep in mind. Um... Okay, okay. Oh, by the way, guys, I'll be testing very soon um, the 585 cooled version from Tube Tech that's upcoming. So uh, just so you know, uh, full del uh, the high full well mode, by the way, it's like the increased well depth. This can be good if you're going to take uh, exposures that are fairly long uh, without blowing out the star cores. So that can be good. I haven't really, like, I've played with it a little bit and didn't, di didn't do too much for me, but yeah, whatever. Whatever works. It's good to have uh, additional modes, but I feel like in the end we cannot cheat the fact that photons and photons and shot noise is shot noise. Um, anyway, let me iconize this. Ooh, this beautiful camera has mm, yummy. <laughs> um, oh yeah, Richard, flats are your nemesis. Um, the AstroWorks channel, uh, AstroWorks. So I, I I always hesitate to kind of like refer people to the AstroWorks channel. Uh, because the AstroWorks channel is basically uh, a ZW channel. Um, Simon here is, is he's a great guy. He works a lot with TJ Connolly um, on ZW products. But uh, while they're not working full time for ZW, they have an extremely tight relationship with ZW. And then the, in their latest video, for example, the 2600 MC uh, duo uh, review that they did, they didn't really mention that in the video, which I, I find a bit eh, not that great. But uh, that said, they do have a lot of tips on how to use the uh, ZW cameras. And there it is processing this video here. Stop processing your ASI 294 data the, the wrong way. Uh, this will help you a lot with your 294 because especially if you use the 294 with narrowband kind of uh, filters, it becomes really tough unless you know the right technique and the right technique is in this video. Uh, but uh, but yeah, again, remember, if you look at this channel, uh, those guys, they're great. They, they have awesome knowledge. They are super helpful as well, but they are very, very tightly linked with ZW, which makes it a bit difficult, I would assume, to be completely objective. Um, anyway. Let us uh, go back to the uh, to the image normalization mode C normalization. So uh, the core originally was burnt out when I tried the normal mode. Now I'm, I set this normal mode to C normalization here, and let's try to apply this to the image. So 
Uh, and yes, Richard, that video I just pointed out, it's exactly what you're looking for, exactly what you're looking for. So the core is still a little burnt out. So you know, what I'm going to try to do is to do some HDR multi-scale transform first. So we're going to do some HDR multi-scale transform. I'm going to say two lightness, lightness mask. I'm not going to bother too much about the number of layers. All I want is for the core to be slightly less bright. And there, now the core is slightly less bright and we also see the pillars a bit better, which is um, really great. So uh, let's try again with the HOO normalization script and see what happens there. <laughs> there, now, now this looks good, doesn't it? Okay. So that, now this looks okay. Uh, now that we've done the uh, normalization, I feel like those two corners there are kind of, uh, kind of, I should maybe do a quick uh, DB just to try and remove those weird red colors in the, uh, in the corners. Uh, and nothing prevents you from doing a DB, by the way, once you've stretched the, the image. Um, Lubo, ASI Air Mini live stacking works great. Really impressed. If you are not a pro editor, it removes the need of stacking in DSS. I agree. The ASI Air stacking is really, really good. When I when I tested it, it was amazing. I mean, overall, the ASI Air is an amazing product. Uh, it's just that uh, I wish it worked with like uh, non ZW cameras and uh, focusers and that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's why I'm really uh, I'm not able to use the ZW Air. I, ASI Air because of that. So mm. um, I am planning on reviewing the upcoming. Oh, that didn't work. Ah, okay, never mind. Oh yeah, it worked a little bit. Ah, I'll keep it like that. So I am planning on reviewing the uh, upcoming Stellarmate Pro uh, and Stellarmate X, which already exists, and I am looking forward to seeing how well Stellarmate is doing in terms of their smartphone app because I think that's really the most important if we need, can have a, comp a competitor to DSI Air that works with uh, other uh, brands. Papi Cléco, bonjour. Paris, il est quelle heure à Paris? Il est pas genre minuit, un truc comme ça? Une heure du mat, non? Wow, you're, you're up late, dude. Um, yes, and David, yeah, I, I watched uh, Adam's video. Uh, I understand everything he said in this video. I just, GHS doesn't work for me. And just to mention, like the, the stretching itself didn't blow out the, cur the core. What bl blurs out, what burnt out the core was the HOO normalization. Uh, sorry, my. Uh, no, I don't want to get the latest version of Windows. Okay, whatever. Uh, da -da -da -da. So now we have the HOO normalization done, and the Oxygen 3 is still doing great. So we're going to do uh, the Lucomatico technique, right? Luke is on the in, the is in the channel, that is his technique, and, and Bill Blanchin's technique, which I believe starts with. I'm going to do curves first. <laughs> I, I was going to say a, a yellow mask, but first I'm going to go to curves transformation and open the preview here. And let's try a very tiny S curve like this. Why is this not well centered? Are we one hour and 25 minutes into the stream already? That's far too long. The guy from the Narrowband channel managed to use the ESIR with QHY cams. Uh, I'm not a huge fan. I mean, it's a very ingenious technique, but I'm not a huge fan of the technique he uses. He basically just makes the ASIR act as um, a USB over IP hub, which means that all of your USB data is flying over the network in real time. If you're on a Wi-Fi, that's a recipe for disaster and introduces a single point of failure. If you've wired the SI Air to the network via like an, an Ethernet cable, it might work, but I'm still a bit leery of that. Relying on wireless USB ports, it's not, not my, my idea of a reliable solution. Maybe it is, but I'm not super enthusiastic about this. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Yeah, the the dwarf too is is quite uh, quite easy to use, uh, and I think it's get, it's getting better with each software update. My understanding is that they're working on a fairly major upgrade. Uh, we'll see. 
Uh, Fruity Records, welcome. So, yeah, sorry. I, 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 again, it was like a spur of the moment kind of uh, live. I, I decided I wanted to give warning. Hey, I'm going to do a live on this day at that time. But uh, I woke up this morning, took a shower and was like, hey, let's do a live. And so I'm sorry, it was uh, completely like a spur of the moment. Uh, have you tried writing software for the Dwarf 2 API? No, no, not yet. No, no, I'm, I, I, I didn't really have the time. I haven't even looked at the API and what's possible with it. But it's awesome that they have an API. It, it gives you an idea of the openness. I, I Honestly, Dwarf 2, it's not the best scope around. It had had teething issues, but it's awesome. It's a great little hiking scope. I use it so often, not on the channel, just like uh, playing around without filming anything. And I really like it. Um, and Sean, no, that did not give him the full functionality of the SI Air. As I recall, it was like a USB over IP hub, and he was using Nina on his local computer and PHD2 and connecting Nina and PHD2 to the cameras via USB over Wi-Fi with the ASI Air acting as a hub, which a Raspberry Pi would do as well, for instance. Uh, but I'm not like, um, yeah, I'm not sure I would want to do that. Okay, uh, so we're doing some contrast curves here. I, 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 this is awesome. I love lives, guys. It's so awesome to be like discussing with you while I'm doing that. Uh, and for some reason, like the 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 screens, the previous screen was huge, but I'm going to do a quick like ooh contrast curve. Nice. This looks nice, and maybe slight saturation curve just for the heck of it. There. Okay, I'm going to resize the preview so it fits in one screen. Like just like that, it already looks super neat, huh? Uh, yeah. And this is a single night of data, guys, from Tokyo. Woo! Um, any difference? Okay. Message retracted. Question about EQ6R Pro. Do you have the EQ mod cable to work with Nina? Why USB uh, connection doesn't work. Uh, so if you have a recent EQ6R Pro, it has a USB port on it. Um, and the USB port, uh, you can use it with, I think the bow rate is this. So you have, if you're using the EQ mode cable, there it is. So in the settings for EQ ASCOM, if you're using the EQ mode cable, you want to set uh, 9600 bow. If you're using the USB cable, you want to set this. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Also, uh, I would recommend using uh, Green Swamp Server rather than EQ Mod. Uh, I, I I honestly love Green Green Swamp Server. It's a great great way to control your Skywatcher mounts, and I find it like it's updated all the time. It's awesome. I really 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 recommend it. Uh, and. You should take a look at the ASI 585. It's a great cam camera. So Jamie, uh, Tobe Tech is coming up with a cooled version of that sensor, and that's what I'm going to be testing soon. So that's going to be fun. Um, question two, should I pull the trigger on the C Star? Yes, do it. <laughs> uh, special price now, really. C Star S50. That's actually fairly cheap. You're right until the 31st of July. Oh, darn. Guys, can can you give me donations? <laughs> Just so I can buy this. How much is this in dollars? 61400 61400 JPY USD. 433. Okay, okay, okay. That's not not bad at all. Um, yeah, no worries, uh, Lubo. Uh, now I, you should not have told me, Lubo, that it was on sale because now I'm like thinking about pulling the trigger. No, don't do it, Quiv. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. Good. Whew. I, I vanquished. Um, finally got my EAF. So where's the money? The EAF is, is neat. Uh, how about G11? Uh, I've never used the G11. Uh, I remember having issues, uh, seeing people having issues with the G11 and Nina. I remember like writing some kind of workout workaround for the G11. I don't remember what it was. 
Um, any difference between Samyang 135mm f2 and f1.8? So f2 is... So the Samyang is f2. Is there a Samyang f1.8? There is a Sigma, if I remember correctly, f1.8 lens. Right, you have the Samyang... Is there a, a 135 f1.8? Oh, that's new. I didn't know about that. Oh, wow. And it has autofocus? Oh, wow. It's, yeah, it's expensive, but, oh, wow. Well, uh, I don't know, the, I mean, besides like faster optics, I don't know. Um, Doug, a greeting from the Netherlands. Enjoying the live processing, I just started DSO imaging and already got a decent HA stack of M16. Woo! Appreciate all the tips. Lived in Tokyo many years ago. You missed Japan. Come back. Uh, uh, so yeah, Pope Astro. Sorry, I don't know. Fait chauffer la carte bleue. Don't make me make me buy this. Uh, yes, uh, Dave, this image was captured with the new Celestron Dew Shield, uh, which solved my donut of death uh, issue. So the Celestron C6 uh, Dew Shield, which is not available in Japan yet. They still only have like the flexible Dew Shield uh, there, this one. Uh, this is great. This is great. This is awesome. Uh, I'll have I'll have videos with, with that information soon. Uh, I got to go. Lucomatico, look! No. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Luke, for being there. Thanks for all you do for us. Honestly, Luke, you you do so much for the hobby. So, thank you so much. Take care. Have a have a good night. Okay. Uh, let's keep going with the processing. I was uh, saying we did a quick. Uh, did I do saturation? Uh, let's do one more. Yes, okay, uh, maybe too much. Okay, let's keep the saturation like this for now. And now we're gonna use more of Bill's scripts with the uh, yellow mask. So yellow mask will create a new image that uses the color yellow to make a mask. It's amazing. Pigeon D or Pigeon D, I'm not sure. Hey Quiv, uh, hey Pigeon. <laughs> uh, later Luke, take care. Oh, by the way, my 150 Quattro has the um, t -t -t toothed focuser and is solid. I'm so jealous. Why? Why do people get the good focuser and I get the crappy sh T1? It's like really annoying. I wish I had like gotten the, the, better, the better focuser. Uh, oh, you don't get the eyepieces in the UK. That's the way to go. Skywatcher, we don't need we don't need the freaking uh, finder. We don't need the eyepieces. We don't need a diagonal. We don't need anything. Oh, wait, no, they don't provide the diagonal, but we don't need anything. We just need the good focuser. Come on. Anyway, yes, sorry. Um, Jeremiah and Byquiv, gonna get ready to shoot tonight. Thank you for everything you share with us, brother. Thank you for joining the stream. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. I thought it would be over in like thirty minutes. It's uh, still ongoing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so pigeon, you are in the middle of the live stream. Uh, welcome. Uh, this is the Eagle Nebula single night fifty five three hundred second exposures with Hyperstar C six, the Anthea ALPT narrowband filter high speed, and the uh, Tobtech uh, five seven one sensor camera. Now you're up to date. We've just stretched the image and we've applied the amazing HOO normalization scripts from Bill Blanchon, uh, these things here. And now we've taken a yellow mask of the image using more of Bill's scripts and we're going to blur this yellow mask using another one of Bill's uh, process icons, not, uh, not scripts really, technically speaking. Whew. So uh, let's apply the yellow mask and I'm not going to show the mask. We're going to go for uh, curves transformation, which is um, here. Why is my preview window so freaking huge? And now I have to like grab it. There we are. Okay, so uh, curves transformation. And what I'm going to do is, this is purely Luke's technique. 
Um, and we are going to increase the red. So you can see immediately like we get more uh, Hubble kind of uh, kind of colors. And we are going to do a contrast curve with the green. Ooh, how sexy does that look in terms of color? <laughs> this looks really nice. I like this. Okay, so we're getting towards some um, SHO uh, kind of look, even though this is HOO. And yeah, Bill is the man doing amazing free stuff for PixInsight. Amazing. Look at this. Doesn't this look awesome? This is all thanks to Bill's scripts. And this is with just a dual band narrow band filter. I, th I find this absolutely amazing. Okay, and now I'm just going to quickly do, uh, I'm going to remove the mask and do a blue mask on this. Hi, Walter. Thank you. Oh, someone loves my channel. <laughs> uh, so we have the blue mask now. I'm going to do some mask blur a couple of times. Apply it. And what I'm going to do is because the blue is like so kind of bright and pale, I'm just going to go ahead and open a No, I don't want the preview of the mask. Open a preview of the image and just the overall luminance. I'm going to try reducing it a little bit, which should darken the image a bit. I'm going to increase the saturation and increase the blue. And it's a bit purplish. So maybe uh, this this is okay, no? This looks okay. Uh, then what do we have? And the Blur X guy, of course. Uh, Russ Croman, I think is the name. Uh, looking good, Crave. Thanks, Dave. And uh, Leslie, awesome. Thank you. Uh, Peter Baldwin, I recently fitted a two-speed Crafer to my Skywatcher 150 PL. Had to hack out a new hole and 3D print an adapter plate. All went well. That doesn't sound like all went well without having it. Oh, my word. Uh, amazing to me uh, that you captured that from Tokyo. Yeah, it is amazing to me too, especially how low over the horizon the, um, the, the Eagle Nebula is. Like normally I stop my imaging when, it, when an object dips below like 40 to 30 degrees. In this case, the Eagle Nebula is always below 40 degrees. So yeah, uh, the Bartle is, well, I, I won't say nine. Yeah, it's it's more or less a bottle nine, like where you you have trouble even like spotting Polaris, for instance. Uh, I almost need to use like averted vision to see Polaris with the naked eye. Um, Robocop, Quiv is is what you're doing now with the pictures is enhancing the nebula true color, or are you manipulating it? I am manipulating the heck out of it. The true colors are something like this. This would be the true colors, basically. And what we're doing is we're approximating uh, SHO type of colors like the Hubble palette. So yes, we are cheating, absolutely cheating. I'm sorry. <laughs> so the nebula does look like a sleeping Buddha, I guess. Also, someone mentioned it looked like a person with a beard. Um, and Walter, I love the Dew Shield by Celestron. I agree. It's really, really cool, cool, good. I hope you can come to Neef next year. You would love it. I know I would love it. I need to be able to take vacation. All I need to have the money to go. So many things to do. Uh, from Tokyo, this is witch, witchcraft and sorcery. Uh, let me apply this. Okay, we, we get some uh, slightly deeper blue. It's a bit purplish. Let, let me actually like go back and see if I can... How can I make it less purplish? Maybe reduce the red. So we're going to reduce the red in that blue. Then we're going to increase the blue in the blue. And we are going to reduce the luminance in the blue. <laughs> and we're going to increase the saturation in the blue. And the hue, does it? Oh, and there we can bring the hue a little bit down. There, it's going to be less purplish. And that's fine. Uh, let's see what uh, what color what comment am I getting? Same Bartle here in Detroit, but we are also getting wildfire smoke from Canada. North stars in weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've heard. We're in the rainy season in Tokyo. This was a, like a single clear night, and I, I took the most uh, advantage, the most of it. Uh, Leslie just set my scene 9.25 for tonight. 
It's an awesome scope. The 9.25 is such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful scope. Uh, clouds are rolling in. Well, fingers crossed that they will roll out. Um, then we have Doug, uh, Doug uh, Berger. I, for one, am a devoted user of harmonic drive mount. Sorry, I missed that question. Yeah, so I use the M5, which is a harmonic drive mount. And someone actually just reached out to me recently to try out a new harmonic drive mount. I need to reply to that image, to that email. Thank you for reminding me. I want to try some more. I had terrible first experience with harmonic drive mounts, uh, but with the AM5, really, uh, the things are looking up. Uh, ta -ta -ta. So Haler, uh, the camera, I got the Toptec slash Ryzen Cam camera specifically because it was smaller than other cameras um, for for my C6 Hyperstar. So it was, I think, five millimeters radius smaller. It makes a big, big difference. I live on the edge of Bordel 1 to 2. Jamie, Jamie, you <laughs> Oh man, can can we all say like we hate you, Jimmy? In the in the chat, I'm just kidding. Don't don't say that. Oh my word! And and Gil is Borel three in Germany. Oh my word! I'm so jealous of you guys. Oh, for you guys, like getting this image would be like five minutes of work. I'm so jealous. So freaking jealous. Ah. Oh. Anyway, uh, did I apply the 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 changes to the image? Not yet. So let me apply. The, the changes to the image. And here we are. Uh, I think it's getting good. What I'm going to do next is just uh, remove the mask and I'm going to create a luminance mask, right? Because what I'm going to do is put the mask on and then we're just going to do some saturation. So curves transformation. And this is something I like to do. I, 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 I think it's bad, but I still like doing it, uh, which is to um, saturate the image and even oversaturate it a little bit. Like here it is. We're saturating the image through the luminance filter. I might have gone overboard, but whatever. And then we invert the mask and we, sorry, desaturate the image with the inverted mask. And here we are. I feel like it gives more contrast. I think I desaturated too much. So maybe something like this. Yeah, looks like it's working to me. This is this is not bad. Uh, Fruity Records, would you say the M5 is better guiding than EQ6 or equivalent mounts? Well, surprisingly, um, yes. Uh, the EQ5, my EQ6 Pro guided less well than the M5 did. My SEM60 guides slightly better than the M5 on the same nights. Uh, yeah, Katamai, I took 36 hours for Pleiades. I'm in Bordel 2. I took five minutes to get better than yours. That's really the beauty of Bordel 1, 2. I am so jealous. Etienne Morin, also Bordel 3.5. Rural Australia. Oh, man, I am so jealous. Like in your place, Jamie, the Milky Way casts shadows. Isn't that completely crazy? Diffuse shadows, sure but shadows nonetheless. I find that completely crazy. Uh, so anyway, uh, the image is, is taking shape, right? So uh, let me do a bit more contrast, like slight, slight contrast. Before I place back the stars, anything else you guys think I should be doing on this image? Actually, yes, I'm going to do another round of noise exterminator, even though I know it's supposed to be on the, um, on the what's the name? Uh, I forgot. On the unstretched image, we have another round of blur exterminator, of noise exterminator, sorry, to remove some of the noise that I see because the HOO process in, uh, introduces some chromatic noise. So it's always goes, good to do that. And maybe I can do an HDR multi scale transform, another one, because since the HOO kind of like still blew out the core a little bit, yeah, this is better. There. Doesn't this look nice? Uh, Smaz Sky, hello. Welcome, welcome. Uh, I love my Jam 45. I heard good stuff about the, the Jam 45. 
Uh, Bordel 5 for Linux Astro. Oh, you're in the flight path of Atlanta. Oh, man. Yep. Yep. I, uh, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've visited Georgia quite a bit. My my cousin um, lives in Georgia in uh, in Rome, GA. Um, okay, so uh, we have the image. Anything else I should be doing? I'll, I'll, I'll give like, let me get a, a drink. This stream already has gone for on for much more, much longer than I expected. <laughs> I'm in bottle four, but just going to nearby bottle six is crazy difference. Yes, Joe, absolutely. Even like when I go from a bottle, my bottle nine to bottle six, I'm amazed. Like bottle six already is like cheat mode. To my, from my point of view, bottle six is cheating. It's just like, it's just incredible. And I cannot even imagine what Bottle 2 is. Actually, I can because I, I experienced Bottle 2 in Death Valley. Emigrant campground um, took some images of, I believe it was the Pleiades there with the 294 and the Canon 200 millimeters. And it was amazing. Absolutely amazing. Are you putting the stars back? Yes, unless you guys have um have a, a, a something to do you want me to do before i put the stars back uh linux astro taylorsville okay yeah 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 so yeah <laughs> uh the, my cousin is like on a huge huge farm uh it's actually super awesome to to go there i love that place um are you putting the stars back yes i already read that i found it great okay do you ever do RGB stars? I should be doing RGB stars, but it's like, if I do RGB stars, I need to switch the filters and take flat frames. And I, I, for some reason, I'm always too lazy to do that, but you're absolutely right. I should be taking like the first five minutes of imaging to just do RGB stars and then place back RGB stars. It would really make the images better. Maybe, maybe next time I have a clear night, I'll just point to the Eagle Nebula again, and just take a quick RGB image and use the stars instead. This is the longest video processing of this channel. You are right, Dr. Sells. Let me, let me get going there. So <laughs> we're going to put the stars back. Uh, so my stars image. Uh, so first I need to remove the mask because otherwise the adding back of the stars will be weird. Um, where are my stars? I hope I didn't close like the stars image. No, there you are. Stars image is called stars and it was uh, using the unscreen mode. So we are going to uh, open our favorite tool, which is pixel math. Uh, reinitialize it and we're going to do invert. Wait, there. Invert of invert the target times invert stars. And that's it. That will be our formula to for adding uh, back the stars. It doesn't come from me. It comes from uh, this unscreen stars uh, toolbox. Okay. Uh, have you tried stacking with Kappa Sigma clipping to remove plane and satellite? So um, I use. I use whatever the, the default in weighted batch pre-processing is, and it seems to work well to remove satellites. Um, yep. It's okay. You're multi multitasking. Thank you. Yes, I am. I am. I'm looking at, uh, at cameras, at, at equipment, at, uh, at the sea star. Oh, I might, I might spring for it. Anyway, uh, getting back the stars there, the stars are back guys. And now what we could do with the stars is reduce them. So I have, I have several ways of doing that, right? I can use uh, Bill's, Bill has a star reduction script somewhere. Uh, do I have it? Bill's star reduction V1. I think there's a newer one. Uh, star reduction method V3. Haha, -ha, there we go. Um, number of iterations, method mode. 
Really? Is that going to work? Oh, image one, starless. So I need to, OK, 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 OK. We're actually going to place back the stars using this. I'm going to rename. How is it this going to work? Starless, OK. So this is going to be named starless. And should we apply it on our stars image? Is this going to work? Nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, what am I doing? Starless image name, right? Oh, I get it. OK, OK, OK. Sorry, I'm stupid. So I'm going to place back the stars again uh, in here. So where's my, ah, damn it. Darn it. I need to go back to pixel, pixel mass. And I'm going to do, again, the uh, tilde of uh, the target times the uh, tilde of stars. There we go. And we put it back. What's happening? Oh, yes, of course. Whew, I got I got worried for a moment. OK, we have the stars back. Now I'm going to make a clone of that with the stars. So I'll call that Starfall. And now I can go back one step. I have the starless image. I have the Starfall image. And we can use Bill's star reduction method script to apply and it will use the starless image together with the star full image, hopefully, to reduce that. Uh, what am I uh, what am I missing? Uh, $t was the best thing I learned in PixInsight. $t is awesome. Uh, Linux, I use Cyril, a low altitude uh, Boeing 747. Definitely, it's going to be a bit too much for stacking uh, rejection. Manuel, hello. Welcome to the stream. Um, oh, this is a good star reduction. Let's see the before and after. It's good and subtle. Uh, I like this. This is nice. Is this a final image, guys? Do we need to do anything more? I don't think so. Uh, hey, Aquiv, Shamrock, Banks, welcome, welcome. Um... <laughs> Leslie, if this is confusing you, I'm screwed. No, so the, the reason was simply I needed to have like a star full image and a star less image. And then I could apply and, and name the starless image starless with a capital S. And then I could apply the script. Uh, Chris, this is uh, data taken from my hyperstar C6. Uh, Tarek, welcome. Uh, I think we're getting towards the end of the stream because I'm pretty much done processing and I'm also getting tired. <laughs> uh, but uh, but welcome and uh, and thanks for uh, coming by. So I'm really sorry I didn't announce the stream in advance. It was a spur of the moment kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, uh, sorry about that. And we've processed the Eagle Nebula. This is one night of data, uh, five, 55 frames of three, 300 seconds each from Tokyo with my Hyperstar C6. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much uh, pretty much it. And it is with my Tech 571 camera, the SEM60 mount, and the Antlia ALPT dual band narrowband filter for high speed telescopes. There. Astronome 66. Wow, formidable, Quiv. Thank you, merci. Uh, Alex McCabe, keep up the good work. Love your channel. Happy longest day star reduction. Looking great. I'm near London. Can you give the Astro Junkies a shout out? Uh, okay, who are? Let me first before I do a shout out. Let me let me. What is the Astro Junkies? <laughs> Astro Junkies. There. I guess that's it. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, so uh, we're gonna assume they have good intentions in mind. Uh, shout out to the Astro Junkies. Um, there, Lee, you make it look easy. It is easy. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no, it's not that easy, but uh, try two and two as script parameters. OK, you know what? Let's let's go one step back. Let's reopen the script. 
and two and two. Okay, let's two and two and see how the star reduction works in that case. And oh, oh, yes, this is better. Thanks for the tip. So two and two reduces more, but more subtly at the same time, it feels. Oh, this is before and after star reduction. How amazing is this? This is so cool. Oh, thanks. Uh, thank you so much, Ant Anthony. That was really cool advice. Manuel, you just processed this nebula yesterday. Uh, it's a cool nebula. It's really awesome. I haven't imaged the eagle in ages because it's so low in the sky for, for me and for everyone in Europe as well, in the US. Uh, Lubo, if you connect to Discord server, you may connect other great people to chat with. I know, I know. I still need to uh, create a Discord server. I just haven't had the time. I know, I know. Can you see the pillars of creation? Yes. They are here. There they are, our pillars of creation, creating stars for us to enjoy. Amazing that we can take such pictures. Uh, Dave, your processing is so lazy. I love it. Yeah, I, I mean, it's like if you can get 95% of the way with lazy processing, I don't care about the remaining 5%. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine with my lazy processing. How, uh, how about a, a shout out for Pope Astro YouTube? Pope Astro YouTube. Let's look at his channel. Pop Astro, Pop Astro. Uh, that's not it. So let's go first to YouTube. And we're going to search for Pop Astro. There you go. Shout out to Pop Astro. Uh, okay. Oh, this looks good. So you are my astro journey well it's a two minute long video i'll watch that after the stream stream this is cool thanks for sharing pope astro uh ta -ta -ta -ta. holy moly uh yeah i actually got the pillars dave it looks like a french clown <laughs> okay <laughs> I like using Photoshop occasion occasionally for final processing. Yeah, actually, someone earlier was asking me whether PixInsight replaced Photoshop completely, to which I said, I don't know because I've never used Photoshop. But yet, yes, a lot of people like in particular to do final color adjustments in Photoshop after PixInsight. Uh, Quiv, could you do a zoom using that small pixel cam before you send it back? Oh, you mean like um, um, a live? Will you at any time have a trip to China? So Lubo, I've been to China actually many times and I I studied in Hong Kong for a year. When I did that, I, I traveled with uh, Chinese friends to uh, to Beijing and around Beijing by train from Hong Kong. That was a, a cool, uh, cool stuff to do. And then I, I went on business trips to Shanghai quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, I guess at some point I will. At some point I will for sure. How about a shout out for Birch as photography. Yeah, yeah, let's let's do shout outs. This there's tons of cool channels. By the way, Pope Astro, this is the cutest picture ever. Just saying. Um Birch. Astrophotography. There. Let's search for it. Birch astrophotography sunglasses looking good. Not as cute as Pope Astro, that's for sure, but Hey, <laughs> and my game changer, the ZW ASI Air Plus. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. It is a game changer. I just wish it supported more um, different brands are, are allowed an unsupported mode where you could use different brands. But that's that's just me. Um, oh, zoom on the pillars using the small pixels camera. That's a good idea. I might do that next time we have a clear night. Uh, any tips on a Hyperstar setup? Uh, I've been uh, looking at getting one. So my main tip about the Hyperstar setup is to pull out your wallet, get the credit card out, and put the number in the thing and click on buy now. <laughs> oh, uh, if you do buy it, uh, use my affiliate links, please. Go to any of my videos and, and click on the links below and then search for Hyperstar and it will still work. <laughs> uh, but more seriously, tips. For me, it worked out of the box. 
you want to make sure that the C6 you have is good quality and that the, um, the opening for the secondary is well centered uh, because on the C6, it's difficult to uh, adjust if it's not the case. But because the C6 is so small, it's actually very rare to, fa to have a bad sample of the C6. So just by the C6, by Hyperstar, put them together and maybe 3D print a tribatinov mask for collimation. But even without the tribatinov mask, you can achieve pretty decent collimation and, uh, and get cool images like this. F2 imaging is really awesome. The only problem with F2 imaging is that uh, narrowband imaging becomes a bit more difficult because you need to have high speed filters or filters with broader band passes. But otherwise, I really love this Hyperstar C6 setup. Uh, okay, uh, what else? Just became your patron the other day. Yoroshiko onegaishimasu. Sora, thank you so much. It helps a lot. Uh, we're doing shout, shout outs. Uh, nice, how about mine? I don't have my face or sunglasses though. Smad Sky, yeah, why not? Why not? There's so many cool Astro channels. Smaz, uh, what was it? Sky? There you go. Welcome to Smaz Sky. Uh, videos. SpaceX. Oh, so some more general. Oh, Jupiter. Moon. Fo uh, that's good. Planetary. This is good. This is good. So for planetary, that's cool. Uh, Todd, cheers for from Austin, Texas. Really enjoy your demos and information. It is my pleasure, Todd. Thank you for coming on. We're almost at the end of the stream. Um, and we have Luis. Bonjour. Ohio gozaimasu. Good morning for Port from Portugal. And thanks for all the tips. My pleasure. Uh, I heard with Raza you have to send it back to Celestron for collimation. No, I don't think so. Dave, you have Raza. You do you, Unless there's like, a, a, it's a lemon, unless you have an actual problem with the Raza, I don't think you need to send it back. So Dave in the chat, if you have an answer to that. Uh, oh, correct. Really? Oh my word, I had no idea. Uh, Quiv, any Q6 or EQ6 are much different? I actually don't know. Um, would you what would you suggest for Eclipse? It's coming right over me. So depends on your budget. If you have the budget you want uh, and you have a refractor that is F7 or F6, F7 is better. Um, quark Chromosphere. If you have the budget, this is probably your, 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 your best bet. They're selling it in Amazon JP. Yeah, no, it did not. Uh, the Daystar Quark. Why? Why? Uh, let's see. Let's have results in English, please. There. So this is not cheap. Not it actually got more expensive since I last looked. But this is the like one of the best ways to get amazing solar imaging with a, a refractor that you always already have. And in particular, if you have like 107 or 106 aperture refractor that does not have any glass at the back, you only want the front end elements. You don't want a, a quadruplet or a quintuplet. If you have a triplet air spaced refractor, uh, this can be amazing. And uh, HA scope works well as well. The advantage of the quark is that you can have large apertures without spending that much money, right? So uh, if you get a LUNT HA scope, you have the uh, 50, which is the personal dedicated one, which is decent. You also have like the Daystar quark, no Daystar uh, Scout, I think. Yeah, the, the, the Scout telescope. Uh, which is also to be supposed to be uh, quite uh, quite good, and uh, then you have like the super duper expensive bigger uh, hydrogen alpha solar telescopes. They all work quite well, and of course you have like if you're uh, in a pinch and you don't have much budget, a Herschel wedge with an air spaced uh, refractor triplet or doublet um, can work really well. Yeah, I've uh, I've demonstrated that on the on the channel recently. Pix Insight versus New Cyril. Okay, I have to look into that. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, guys, I think uh, we're getting uh, towards the uh, towards the end. 
Oh, interesting, Dave. Raza has only tilt issues, so I recommend the Hyperstar for beginners. Huh, that makes sense. Okay. I mean, I'm sure you could have tilt issues with the Hyperstar, but Hyperstar is really, really well built. And you get of also the um, the flexibility of uh, of having... Let me actually uh, put, uh, put me in big. Hello. Uh, the flexibility of having a scope that you can use long focal lengths. You can also use it with a focal reducer, like from Starizona, and you can also use it with uh, Hyperstar. So you get like really three scopes in one. So that can be uh, that can be really good. Uh, other comments: How well would the doublet work work with the Data Quark, Daystar Quark? Really well. Doublet will work perfectly fine with the Daystar Quark. Uh, the only thing I would recommend is make sure don't buy like a, an Acromat. Even an Acromat could work well, but I would recommend a doublet at least. Doublet or triplet, and make sure that it has a good focuser because you the focus on solar photography is and, and visual as well is really hard to get right. And I find having a good focuser makes a huge, huge difference. So yeah, doublets will work well. You can buy a large, like one 100 millimeters kind of size doublet, um, plus pair it with a quark that gives you an amazing solar scope for a fraction of the price of a dedicated solar scope. Dave, I had absolutely no idea that the Raza required you to send it back to Celestron for collimation. That kind of like putting it out of my reach in Japan. I would not want to do that in Japan. The Daystar don't work correct. So quadruplet, quintru quintruplet, anything that has any refractor that has a lens at the back of the telescope towards at the focuser end does not work with quartz or Herschel wedges. Uh, so only with uh, air-spaced refractors that have lenses at the front of the telescope only. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I think I'm. Uh, we're pretty much uh, done here. Let's let's have a, a, a look at the uh, at the uh, at the result again. I think this is super cool for a single night in Tokyo. It's really the power of high-speed uh, telescope plus narrowband filters and this is like with five nanome nanometers band passes so it's better than the l extreme that i used to use and i was expecting to see more halos because we had when luke and i reviewed this filter we both had noted uh, halos on the brightest stars but with those stars in the eagle nebula no halos it's uh, looking perfectly well for the high speed version of the uh, antlia alpt so um yeah this is uh this is awesome Robocop, will I be able to see the Pillars of Creation using the Skywatcher 62 um, ED uh, 400? So the Pillars of, of Creation, yes, they're going to be small, but you know, if you if you have, depending on your camera, if you have like a camera with uh, uh, eight micrometer pixels, it's not going to work out. But if you have like the uh, the current 3.7 kind of uh, standard size, are smaller than that you would see the pillars of creation. They wouldn't be very detailed, but they'd be visible. Ah. Okay, yes, I am going to end it. I think we're getting uh, we're getting uh, uh, over with the questions. I hope you had fun. I definitely did processing this together with you. I find the Bill Blanchin scripts absolutely amazing. So, and please link the filter for us when you can, much appreciated. So if you go into probably any of my videos, uh, let's see. Let, let, let me search for myself. Uh, Quiv Lazy Geek. And do I? I don't have the LPT. Okay, I'm gonna add the LPT in there. Uh, my bad. I'll I'll put the link in there, and uh, and then you can uh, you can have a look. That's ah, really bad for me not to have it, have it. Cool. Thanks for thanks for the reminder. Whew. Okay, guys, I'm going to call it uh, a morning, not a day, uh, just a morning for me. Uh, it's only 9 a.m. here, <laughs> uh, but uh, I think it's nighttime for, for you guys. So uh, thank you so much for joining. This was a lot of fun. Um, merci, Dark Pixels. Uh, Fruity, not so lazy. I am lazy. I am really lazy, actually, but... Uh, Depends. I'm selectively lazy and I'm lazy in the term, in the meaning that I want to be efficient. 
So that's uh, that's how it is. Thank you for a cool stream. Thank you, Todd, for participating. Thanks for all the tips. By the way, I learned new stuff as always. So it's always awesome. Tom, thank you. Uh, Chupa, thank you so much. Um, I will I will uh, do more of those live streams whenever I feel like it. And uh, wow, Dave, only 30 days for collimation. That is bad for the Raza. Anyway, 1 a.m. Fruity Records. Dude, go to bed. <laughs> Have a great night. Um, enjoy some clear skies. Hopefully, I hope those um, wildfires get better, like in all respects, not just for Astro, but like in general, it's a, it's a bummer that those are, are going on. So I hope they get uh, they get better. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah, busy, being lazy is a lot of work, but it's for long term. So absolutely, Luis, you're absolutely right. Yes, China, 8 in the morning. So China is good still. <laughs> Okay, guys, I'm going to end it now. So thank you so much for participating. Um, 4 a.m. Damn, Tarek, I was trying to end it edit there. Uh, 4 a.m. Wow. Uh, yes. You have. Oh, man. Okay, I, I need to end it. I need to end it. So <laughs> thank you so much, guys. Uh, you know what? Don't forget whenever you can to look up <laughs> at the stars. <laughs>